Morning from San Francisco, B Cup. Let's do these together. Good morning, San Francisco. Trampa's so tired right now. Ugh. I'm gonna do Facebook and YouTube together. Good morning, Philip. Yes, I'm here. Oh my god. Actually, I just woke up. <laughs> Can't you tell? I actually wake up and get right on the B cup. So I just need you people to know that I'm aware that, that it is important that we have this conversation in the morning with my coffee. So good morning, Philip. Good morning, Sarah. I'm a little out of it. I had such a, I got here on Thursday and today is Monday. I have been nonstop. So much going on. Yesterday at the Folsom Street, Good morning, Ty. How are you doing, my friend? At Folsom Street, we released the new uh, toys, the new Buck Angel line of toys. Uh, good morning, Fathi. Good morning, David. Uh, good morning, Ronaldo. Good morning, my friends. Uh, good morning, Katie. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I just ordered a whole bunch more Bucks Bomb because it's taking off, kids. Thanks to all of you, Bucks Bomb is taking off. It's it's okay, Philip. Just come for a little bit of uh, the B cup and then go and do your thing. But you get a little bit of that. So, good morning, Mike. Good morning, Mandy. Uh, here comes Tor Tori. And good morning, Alex. I hope you're good. Patrick, good morning, my friend. Uh, Patrick, good. great to see the cap is back. Yes. Good morning, Tori and Casey and Betty and Deborah. So, this morning we're going to talk about <laughs> the things I love to talk about. Because I felt so much love and compassion all week long uh, since I've been here. I met so many amazing people. But really, I'm, I yesterday uh, at Folsom, it was amazing to see so many people. But like everyone was just together. And people just uh, love the new products that Perfect Fit and I are releasing on my line of toys. It's amazing. We have we have what's called the Fun Boy that's coming out. I posted some pictures of it, and it's really just gonna. It's amazing to watch everybody just love the stuff that we're bringing out. Buenos dias, Señor Ruben. Uh, ¿Cómo está? Necesario para mi practicar mi español. Ellos en en esto está bien para mi uh, practicar mi español. <laughs> you guys love when I speak Spanish. <laughs> When I speak Spanish, people are always like, you speak Spanish? I'm like, yeah, I know I look like some dumb white guy, but actually, <laughs> I speak Spanish. People love to make assumptions. Don't forget that. Mike says, real quick, I just want to mention that this past week in the American Veterans for Equal Rights Rocky Mountain Chapter was able to raise $3,100 to support the cause. Congratulations, my friend, and thank you for doing that. I'll be in Telluride, Colorado, speaking in January. Don't know how far that is from you, but if you want to meet me there, uh, please do. Chris says, uh, don't think there's enough coffee in the world. Oh, wow. I feel wasted, you guys. Now, I'm not a wake and baker. I haven't smoked yet, but I smoked a lot yesterday because we also had a cannabis party. So I used a lot of cannabis yesterday, and I think that's why I feel a little bit out of it. I tell you. I use cannabis as a medication, not as a party drug. But yesterday, I did kind of use a little bit as a party thing, to, and then that's why I don't do it, because it just takes me out, and I, I don't really like the way I feel the next day. Good morning, Deborah. So, I want to let you know this. I talk a lot about being sober. I'm 30 years sober from drugs and alcohol. I do not use alcohol, and I do not use any drugs. No crystal meth, no cocaine, no mushrooms, no acid, no... I don't know, name it. I don't use it. The only thing that I, yeah, I'm a, Mitchell, I'm totally burnt out. The only thing that I do use is cannabis. I use cannabis. I smoke, I smoke uh, joints, and I also use the Pride Cannabis vapes. This is one of my vapes right here. I believe in it. I am a big, huge 
gigantic, gigantic activist for cannabis. I am a believer that it is not a gateway drug. It does not make people fall back. If you use cannabis as a responsible medication, like any medication, it should not have any effect on your sobriety. Good morning, Gina. Good morning, Deborah. But let's talk about all of us are different. Again, you cannot say what works for me can work for you or what works for you can work for me. This is something we must apply across every line within our community. This is what we must apply across the line in our community. What works for me in my transition, <laughs> what works for me in my transition might not work for you in your transition. We are not the same. The amount of testosterone I take, how long I've been taking it, what I do for my body, what I put in my body, how I do my body is different than your body. It's the same. Hi, Diana. I'm glad you made it too. It's the same thing with anything we use. I am sober. I'm going to say it over and over. You can disagree with me all you want. It doesn't matter to me that you disagree with me. It's your opinion of my sobriety. Think about what I just said. Think about what I just said. It's your opinion about my sobriety. I know my sobriety and my sobriety entails this. No drinking alcohol for 30 years, no using any narcotics, any drugs, anything that I have ever been addicted to. Never was I addicted to or used marijuana in my past life. I use mar cannabis, is what I like to call it, now. It has never in one single time that I have used marijuana ever made me want to drink alcohol or do any of the drugs that I used before. Ever. That's me. It's not you, but it's me. Now, what I want to talk to you about is this. It's very important. Nate says, when it comes to addiction and transition medication, I'm a firm believer that all options should be on the table for those seeking help. Right. That's my point. Jerry says, are you selling drinkables and edibles through your cannabis company? Yes, we are starting with we, we, CBD water, but I'm also making my own edibles. I'm making Bucks balls. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? I'm making Bucks balls. They're going to be CBD like energy balls and I'm uh, food and I'm also going to make THC and CBD balls. I also think I should make some mints. Mints are great for travel. Mm. So that said, listen, let's get back to this conversation because I really want to bring this conversation to the table. I want to bucks balls. I want to bring this conversation to the table. I'm so like, I'm pretty bummed the way that people make um, judgments against me because of my sobriety. And I am using quotes because uh, people call it whatever they want. It's my sobriety. Sobriety is like, can someone put the definition of sobriety for me on here? I would appreciate it. Put the definition of sobriety for me because I want to read it and I want to see how that relates to my own type of sobriety. So, so again, I have a cannabis company. The reason I started a cannabis company, which is called Pride Cannabis, and you can go to pridecannabis.com, and I'm telling you the reason why. Now, there are some people out there who are sober, who might want to, who are, their doctor is putting them on medication because they have anxiety. When you go through sobriety, you get anxiety, you get, you know, uh, uh, PTSD, triggers, all kinds of fucked up shit when you're going through sobriety, early sobriety, even through sobriety. So, why are we not given the option of using cannabis as an alternative to oxycodone, Vicodin, antidepressants, all the other medication that they prescribe from the doctor? Why are we not giving this? Thank you so much, Tori. Why are we not giving the opportunity to use? <laughs> the definition of sobriety from Tori is the quality or state of being sober. Okay, give me the definition of sober. Jack says, you are a big inspiration to me, dude. Thanks for being great. No, thank you, my friend. But look, it's it's us. You inspire me. I inspire you. When you show up, we have a conversation. And we can actually have a fucking adult, a fucking adult conversation, right? Like, let's, this idea that we can't talk to each other because you might disagree with me is so childish. We have to disagree with each other. Yes, Gina, pharma, pharma profits. Yes. Hi, Allison. I miss you, too. 
Uh, Deborah says the cannabis products will be good for us. Yes. So the state, uh, here, here, the state of quality being temperance or moderation, especially in the use of moderation, seriousness, gravity, or solemnity, an event marked by sobriety. So basically, there isn't really a definition. I think it's kind of your definition of your sobriety. Hi, Jerry. Good morning. Nice to see you. Oh, yes, we know why. All of you are very in tune to why we don't offer cannabis as also a medication. Because Big Pharma does not have its hand in it. And Big Pharma will not make money from it. But fuck you, Big Pharma. I'm so sick and tired of worrying whether or not we can take care of our own health because they're telling us we can't. Again, what do I feel about being told what to do? I don't like it. I need options. It is my life. It is not yours. That is the same with our transgender or LGBT community. They have no right to tell us how to be. A community is made up of like-minded individuals who have different ideas and different ways of doing things, but we have one ultimate goal. That's what a community is. It's not a, a community doesn't, isn't everyone thinking the exact same thing, eating the exact same food, dressing the exact same way, shooting the exact same testosterone, walking and talk. That's not a community. That is a cult. And the same thing goes with sobriety. Sobriety is the same way. My sobriety is my sobriety. It's not your sobriety. How I work my steps, how I work my anything. I am 30 years sober. I will pound it into your heads. <laughs> I am 30 years sober. Cannabis is not a drug. It is a medication that helps me deal with my anxiety. Oh, Komog. Komog from Indonesia. I'm going to be in Indonesia in February in Jakarta. Just so you people know this, I'm coming to Jakarta, Indonesia to speak. Isn't that amazing? Uh, hi, 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 Sarah. Tracy says, I know I have lately had issues with drinking too much. I do smoke cannabis. I know I need to try harder to give up alcohol. Now, that's your thing. If you feel that alcohol is actually an interference in your life, then yes, I highly agree with you. Think about it. That's with anything. Look. When I start to use too much of this cannabis, I pull back because I know I'm waking up like, I don't, that's not the way I live my life. I can eat a ham, no, I don't eat hamburgers, what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll eat a whole pizza at night. Sometimes I eat a whole pizza and then I wake up in the morning like, fuck, I can't believe I just ate the whole pizza. Oh, my mic is cutting in and out. I don't know, dude. I think it's my iPhone. I think it's dying. I have an iPhone 6S. I don't know. And also I'm in a hotel. The connection could not be so great. I apologize. It's part of traveling. But listen, I just want to tell you this. What is sobriety? <laughs> what is sobriety to you? How many people in here are sober? How many people consider themselves sober? Elise says, in Australia, ATM, we're voting for and against same-sex marriage, and it's bringing out a lot of hate from the against side. Yes, I know this, Elise. I know this, Elise. It's shocking. Because I didn't think of Australia as such a conservative country, but I guess it is. I visited there a lot of times. So what I think about this, Elise, is that I'm going to say this. We are falling back. We are falling back. And that means the whole world. We are falling back. Why are we, the LGBTQIA, not that community? But why is our community falling back? I'll tell you why. I, I, my opinion is this. No love and compassion. No, look, Brazil. Here in Brazil, we can't have this freedom. I know. So it's happening in Brazil. It's happening in Australia. It's happening in America. The, anti, the intolerance, I hate that word tolerance, but the unacceptance of the LGBT community is falling back. Why is this happening? I'll tell you why I think it's happening. Because we are not loving each other enough. We, you and me, you and me, we don't love each other. So guess what? When we don't love each other, our fucking community goes, it cracks. We've cracked. We've cracked and splintered into millions of pieces. We don't like each other. How strong are we? We're not strong at all. We are not strong. We are weak. We are weak, and guess what happens when you're weak? They infiltrate you, and they come in, and they tear your community apart. They did it. 
They're fucking smart. They broke our community apart by creating gatekeepers, by creating language, by creating the way we work, the way we interact with each other, that the older generation hates the younger generation, that the trans men hate the trans women, that you're not trans if you're not trans, and this trans, and you're not gay if you don't fuck guys, and you're not gay if you don't hang out with a lady. And you see what we did? You see what we did? We completely, totally destroyed our community by making us label ourselves. Label ourselves. Jack says, I'm also an Australian. It's sad to see LGBT people being afraid to be themselves. I am in total disbelief. Patrick says, we are falling back. Yes, the forces against us are in motion. Are in motion. It is scary. And listen to me. It is why me and you show up here every day. Do you notice that? Pretty much we have a bunch of regulars here, I would say, right? Pretty much I would say we have a bunch of regulars here. That says a lot to me. It says you and I are like-minded. We want to have love and compassion. We love each other. We love this dialect. My God, you guys. My God, you guys. Good morning, Nate. It's nice to see you, Lauren. Good morning. Listen. My God, people. <laughs> How is it not possible that we're not hundreds of thousands of us talking to each other like this? How is it not hundreds of thousands of us not talking? So many of ours are brainwashed. So many of ours are brainwashed to, to, to feel hatred against each other. This is brainwashing. Yes, Nate says, we are the ones who are tired of infighting. Chelsea says, Buck, I haven't been on here way too long. Missing you. I miss you too, my friend. Thanks for showing up. Yes, Nate. We are the ones. We're so tired of it. We're so tired of it. Good morning, Chris. I mean, but I had to have. <laughs> it's nice to see you. How do we? I am. I. It, it just. It makes me sad. You know, I'll start to cry if I think too deep about it. It makes me sad because we don't need to be at this level in 2017. We don't need to be at this level where we have to make a show called The Bee Cup where we have to make sure that everybody fucking knows what love and compassion and tolerance and ideas and discussion. The fact that we have to even have a show like this in order to get people back to the side is distressing to me and sad to me. It makes me feel like, wow, wow, why are there not hundreds of thousands of us like-minded this way? Uh, Diana says, too many people have their own agenda. And here's the deal, Diana. I agree with that. But what is an agenda? I Do I have an agenda? I think maybe I have an agenda. My agenda is to bring us back together with tolerance, love. Why do I keep saying that word tolerance? I heard it a lot yesterday and it got stuck in my head. I don't like that word tolerance. Tolerance sounds negative to me. It sounds like I'm just going to tolerate you, but I don't really like you. I don't want that. I don't want somebody to tolerate me. I want somebody to either like me, understand me. If you dislike me, that's okay too. But I don't want you to tolerate me. Tolerate me it feels fake. It feels like I'm forcing you to like me. I'd rather you not like me. Just don't like me. <laughs> Does that make sense? Just don't fucking like me. Um, uh, thank, thank you, Christy. Sarah says, I think sobriety can mean many things to different people. It can mean some. Yes, but that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. Alex says, just a small note, finally the police talked to my landlord and I think the cause she has finally backed off. Well, there you go. That's what you should have done in the first place, Alex. Way to go. Junior says, I'm sending all my friends trampol mugs for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Here's what I want to tell you people. I love you. I don't know if I told you all yet this morning that I love you a lot. I love you guys so much. You mean the world to me. The B Cup means the world to me because I do see change. I do see us changing. We've been doing this for like a year now. I do see the change. I do see the regulars. I do see how we all get along with each other and how I, my mind has been changed by many of you in here. How we have discussion like adults. How we can say, how I can just say how I feel about anything and you guys are like, yeah or no, or yeah. Right? <laughs> do you see my face? Uh, what a novel idea. <laughs> what a novel idea. Let's have a coffee. Let's have a coffee and talk to each other. Oh, wow. Never thought of that one. <laughs> Never thought of that one. Jesus Christ, man, really. <laughs> Chris says, yes, 
we should have have to deal with being labeled for being who we are. But our own community is doing that to us. Our own community is forcing us to accept things that we might not agree with. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with the fact that we can't say tranny, but we could say queer. I highly disagree with that for in a, for for a fact. I highly disagree with it. I highly disagree with the fact that they say transsexual is an antiquated word which no longer relates to the community. I disagree with that. It doesn't mean that I hate you. It doesn't mean that you can't use transgender. It doesn't mean that you don't have to say tranny. But what it means to me is that I can. I can say transsexual. I can identify myself as a transsexual. I can identify myself as a tranny. I can identify myself as what I like to. You can disagree, but you can't tell me, no, I can't use it. it. The world doesn't work that way, people. Whoever started this idea that you can start to structure and restructure the way people speak is very shocking to me and very dangerous to me. And I don't run around the fucking world saying tranny. I don't do it. You know that. I don't. I just use it as an example of playing policing with words. It's dangerous behavior. When you start calling cisgender people scum, it's dangerous behavior. When you start telling people that this is the only way you can identify, it's dangerous behavior. Aaron says, sit in the chair, get my first round of chemo. Bless you, my friend. We're sending you, Aaron, we're sending you a lot of love, my friend. You're, you're in good hands, okay? We, we have a lot of powerful love for you. Leah says, tolerance is important when you're talking about people who hate deeply. Tolerance is, yeah, I understand that, the first step to acceptance for those people. But yes, within our own community, we should be accepting. Yes, my friend, thank you for explaining that. I, I appreciate that, Leah. And you're right. You're totally right. It is learning first. There's steps. There's just something about this tolerance. It just always sounds, and I get it. You know, there's the Museum of Tolerance, uh, which is an amazing museum. If you have ever not had the opportunity, you should. It's in Los Angeles. Uh... Uh, Museum of Tolerance. Uh, it's incredible and sad and you'll cry, but there we go with the word tolerance. But it, but I, you understand what I'm talking about. Chris says, if we give power to words and they choose to give power to them, it's, it's a simple concept. It's a simple concept. Why do you think we took back queer? We took back queer for that same thing. Good morning, Amber. And now queer, we're all queer. I don't need to tell you. There's a history of queer. It's horrible. It's mean. Lots of older gay men don't like it. We pretend like it's okay to use anyway. Have some compassion. Have some understanding. If you want compassion, you must have compassion back. Queer is also a very, very disruptive word. Not everybody likes it. So stop acting as if you can just say queer and I should just accept it. No. <laughs> Wake up. It's so frustrating to me when people tell others they can't identify as they want to. It's frustrating for me, Sarah. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Chris says, I love, I do not tolerate. To tolerate is yes. Jack says, do you travel and do talks? I love, I travel all over and do talks. I haven't done it for a while. I kind of, uh, uh, I think I told you, I kind of pulled myself out of the university speaking um, circuit because I'm just an older generation. I'm too rough. Those kids are too, too much uh, snowflakey. Uh, untolerating children. The universities are full of children. They're not full of adults. The universities in America, I speak at universities in Europe and other places. The universities in America are full of babies. They're full of babies. They're full of children who don't want to learn. They're full of children who are full of triggers and situations where they cannot be challenged in their thought. They cannot be challenged in anything. So the minute anyone like me comes to speak at the university, some idiot protests and says that I'm dangerous and that I'm problematic. Yeah, I am problematic. I'm not dangerous. But you understand what I'm saying? Fuck that. I don't have time and energy for that. I have a huge amount of people that want to hear me speak and that give me love and acceptance to speak. I don't need to be pushed against. That's not my life. And I don't, if you don't want to hear me speak, I'm not coming. I don't, I have many, too many other places I can go. It's okay with me. So I don't need to be treated as if I'm sort of like um, worthless or that my voice doesn't count or, you know, and I won't do it. So 
I just said, you know what? If a if a if a university reaches out to me and I'll see it, then it's fine. I might do it. But I had a very bad situation, my friend, uh, at the University of Madison, Wisconsin. I think we've spoken about it before. Have we not? The University of Madison, Wisconsin Gay and Lesbian Center brought me in to speak for the sex ed week and a couple kids felt uh, scared of me and called me a problematic activist. And then I was like, all of a sudden they said, you're not coming to speak. And I'm like, what? We're going to have a town hall meeting about your problematic activism. I go, without me? Without me? So so wait a minute. You guys are going to have a, you're gonna, in, in lieu of my talk, in lieu of my talk, you're going to have a whole thing and a hundred people are waiting to see me about me being a problem grow up university of madison wisconsin grow up university children grow up you are allowed to have speakers who you might not agree with isn't that school isn't that school anyway blah 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 I'm not speaking at universities. I'll pick and choose which ones. I speak at lots of different types of community events. If you want to bring me in to speak in your area, reach out to me. It's a possibility. I travel all over. We can make it happen. So, yes, <laughs> I'm in a very good space. I can pick or choose where I want to speak. I can pick or choose what I want to do. And that's the best thing and the best space for me to be. Sarah says, I'm sad to hear you were treated badly at the University of Wisconsin. Whoa, not cool. You're right. Yeah, not cool, Sarah. Very not cool. And very not cool that I'm suing them. <laughs> I'm suing them. You can't do that. You can't renege on a con. I have a contract. You can't renege on it because all of a sudden two students are scared of me and actually posting lies about me. That's called slander. Be careful, children. Be careful, children, because there's people like me who don't play that fucking game. You're going to learn the hard way. It's going to come out of your tuition now. When you, when you post lies and shit on the internet about people, that's called slander. And if you're in a university, you should be learning that. And what have we just taught children at the University of Madison, Wisconsin? We taught them this. Go on the internet on Facebook and you don't like somebody, make lies and, and shit about them. Okay, make lies. That's what we just taught and get them not to come. Wow, you just taught your students that behavior. You just taught your students that kind of fucking behavior. Shame on you, University of Madison, Wisconsin. I am taking you out. Watch me, you guys know me. I don't play that shit. I will, st I will 100% own up to mistakes. That's not even a problem, but do not make lies about me. Anyway, the fact that you would just let children at a university do that is really fucking embarrassing. It's embarrassing for your university. Embarrassing. They would never do that in Europe. Or It's gross, you guys. Um, I can speak in your bedroom anytime. <laughs> yes, Christy, slander and defamation of character. Very much so. And I'm not doing this for me, and I'm not doing it for the money. Okay, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. I'm doing it because I'm sick and tired of these little children in these universities who will soon be adults acting like they can just make shit up. Stop it already. Fuck, man. It's like fucking ridiculous. Yeah, that school is supposed to be progressive. That's why I'm going after them. Who said that? Jerry. That's why I'm going at him. People are like, oh, that's the most awesome school, like blah, blah. Oh, really? Out of all the universities I've spoke at, that was the one who fucking reneged on my contract and fucking talked shit about me. Ha <laughs> ha, University of Madison, Wisconsin. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, they choose to teach hatred and, not, and it's a shame. Unbelievable. And I'm doing it for us, you guys. I'm spending my own money. My own money on a lawyer. It's costing me money to do this. I'm spending my own money on a lawyer in order because I'm an activist and I, I cannot let this happen. I cannot let this happen. When this happens in one place, it will happen in another. And they will start to shut down transgender voices that are also important in our community. My voice is as important as your voice. If you don't want to hear me, don't show up. But there were over 100 kids shined, sh signed up to come and see me. So those kids didn't even get to see me. What? What? Anyway, I got to go, kids. I got a big day. I got to go do a photo shoot. I got so much stuff going on. I just wanted to get up and talk to you because, you know, I want to start Monday off. 
So I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to leave you with this, okay? I'm going to take off my shirt because it's super hot. I'm going to leave you with this. A lot of us hate our bodies. I hate my body sometimes. I work very hard on my body. I work very hard on my outer being. Our outer being is a lot of times the reflection of the inner part of ourselves. I decided that I really wanted to look a very specific way since I was a kid. Since I was a kid, I always looked at very masculine men. I always had a desire to be very ma muscular. I don't know about the tattoos, but I had a desire to be as masculine. I wanted a mustache. I wanted a beard. I didn't necessarily want to be bald, but my desire to be masculine was what I desired so deep in my heart. So deep in my heart, it could make me cry because I achieved that look. I achieved this physical look in order to create a well-being inside of my own heart and my own system in order to walk the world. Now, what I'm going to tell you is this. I believe that you must and you do, whether or not you know or not, have your own vision. Your own vision. Not a vision from the community, not a vision from other people in this community, not, a, not being told how to be. If you are asking me or any other community person how to be trans, you are asking the wrong question because there is no way to be trans. There is no way to be anything other than the true you. You know who you are. You do not need me to validate who you are. You do not need anybody to validate who you are. I became this man that I envisioned my whole life. I don't care if you think I'm toxic, I'm too masculine, I'm not this enough, I da 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 It doesn't matter. I don't need your approval to be this man. All I need from you is compassion, love, acceptance, dialogue, but I don't need your approval. And that's, my friend, where I want you to understand you also have that ability. Stop asking people for approval because you don't need approval. The universe will give you approval. <laughs> the universe will tell you whether or not you're on the right path or you're not. You will know things will happen. Whatever those things are, they will happen. You might get off because your job is this. You might get off because you don't have money in your bank account. You might get off because school sucks. Those are things telling you, get. You, you know when your life is off. You don't need another community member to tell you you're not good enough because that's basically what they're telling you, that you're not good enough. Now, who are these people telling us we're not good enough? They're people who already don't feel good enough in their own bodies. It's why they're telling you you're not good enough. Would I ever say that to you? Never. And why wouldn't I say that to you? Because I love you and I know that you are on your path and I know that you will find your path. And my, my job isn't to tell you what your path is. My job is to bring you along to your path, to encourage you to your path, to love you on your path, to show you your path, to say, look, I made it. That's what community is. It's not telling other people in this community how to be. That is not community. If you are around other people in this community who are telling you, so my friend, this is trans, you must get away from them because they will lead you in the wrong direction. They are leading you to their path. They are not leading you on your path. Do you understand what I'm saying? They will lead you on their path. <laughs> Rachel, you didn't miss. Don't worry, my friend. Stop worrying what other people. I missed all of your things. I'm sorry. I was on one of my talks. <laughs> I love you guys. Listen. It's your path. Today, take your path. Not another person's path. I don't have to give you acceptance. I don't have to give you anything except love. And that, my friends, is what you must give back. Love and compassion to other people in 
our community. Most importantly, the ones who are the hateful ones in our community right now. They're the ones who we need to come after. They're the ones who we need to show what love and compassion is. They're the ones we need to show what the B cup is. They're the ones that we need to actually save because they hate themselves. And to love yourself is a gift. Let the universe show you the way. It will show you. Let go of the fear. Let go of the anger. Let go of the resentment. Let go of the jealousy. Let go, let go, let go. Because if you don't let go, you're going to continue to have it and you're not going to grow to the person you should be. You have every opportunity to be that person. You are stopping yourself. You are stopping yourself because of fear, resentment, jealousy, envy, anger, because you don't like the other person. But why? But why? Just ask yourself the question, why? And you'll start to hear the answer. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have a beautiful day. Remember what I tell you all the time. Give if you can. Take if you need it. It's a real thing. You cannot just take. You cannot just take. You have to put back. When you take from the piggy bank, eventually the piggy bank is empty. Fuck, where's all the goddamn money? I don't know. I didn't put any back. You got to put it back. <laughs> Cycle it, my friends. Go to the day. Make an awesome day. Monday is a beautiful day because Monday helps you to start the rest of the week. So when you start the rest of the week on a beautiful note, you will have a fucking... Today, you will have the rest of the week fucking awesome, my friends. Okay? I love you guys. I'm going to let YouTube go. I love you guys. Thanks for showing up on YouTube as well. I appreciate that. I'll see you guys um, tomorrow. Okay? Oh, I'm traveling tomorrow, but I'll try to get up early and do the show before I travel, okay? Bye, guys.